Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode number 26, Global Money for a Global Economy, with our guest, Tone Vase. Tone is the head of research at Brave New Coin and is a 10-year Wall Street veteran. His experience revolves around the area of risk analysis and trading. He's a big believer in sound economics and an advocate for personal liberty, freedom, and privacy. Also with me today is my good friend, Sarah Blinko, who is making her first appearance as a Liberty Entrepreneur's interviewer. Sarah asked Tone how his entrepreneurial journey has created more personal freedom in his life and how Bitcoin played a major role. Tone and I chat about how Brave New Coin is attempting to be the Bloomberg of Bitcoin, how an efficient market will help Bitcoin's adoption, and the importance of hiring virtual staff in various jurisdictions around the world to help you build your business. Please follow us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. As always, show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com and on YouTube. Enjoy the show. So today we're with Tone Vase from Brave New Coin. Tone, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh no, glad to be on. Thank you. So give us a brief bio and tell us a little bit about yourself. So I started out working on Wall Street right before the 2008 financial crisis. My first job was at Bear Stearns um, and I stuck around that area, uh, JP Morgan after that, a few other financial companies. And I discovered Bitcoin. Uh, I've heard of it back in 2011 and 12, but I finally went out and I got my first, uh, I guess I got my feet wet by buying a couple of Bitcoins in 2013. And after that, I slowly... Uh, understood more about it, understood what it was. In 2014, I started writing economics and trading uh, things that I knew and how Bitcoin fit into this into the global ecosystem of finance. I started writing that in 2014 and then just this past year in 2015, decided to quit my job, join Brave New Coin and uh, take it from there, traveling, speaking at conferences, trading, uh, really trying to enjoy life right now, finally. That sounds great. Um, so tell us what Brave New Coin is. So Brave New Coin, we're trying to be the Bloomberg of the crypto space, obviously much smaller considering the crypto space is much smaller compared to the normal financial space. And uh, we have a really good index that several wallets are using uh, that is, has a way more stable price than any one particular exchange. Uh, we have other products coming out soon. In addition, we want to be a data provider uh, to the traditional financial world because um, everyone needs data. You need historical data. You need to build economic models. You need to build risk models uh, or testing your trading strategies. Uh, so we have relationships with all these exchanges and we have all the data any professional financial institution needs. Uh, we also have a news division as well and we're uh, branching out into other areas like writing reports and um, I guess consulting within the financial world. And is anyone else in the crypto or Bitcoin space doing this right now? The the financial aspect that Brave New Coin is trying to trying to do? I, I don't think so. Not, not all together in one. I know there's a couple of companies coming up now uh, that even started after us. And Coindesk does do something similar. They do come out with their reports uh, and they also have an index. Um, I just think ours is better because I, I built it. It was my spec. Eh, I'm not the developer, but I help design how it's being calculated with my experiences. Right. So you have a financial background. It, was it the financial aspect or the technical aspect that really caught your attention in Bitcoin? It was a combination. My, uh, my master's degree is in financial engineering. Uh, so I've always sat on like quant desks where you have these PhDs in computer programming and finance, uh, building risk models. Uh, that's the, I guess that, that's where I've been for the last eight, nine years. Um, and when I finally 
started reading and understanding Bitcoin is just a perfect combination of, uh, I guess, the medium of exchange for the digital age. Uh, and that's what really drove me to it. So who do you foresee as your clients? Who would use the services that Brave New Coin are starting to build and, and offer? Well, um, my the old institutions I used to work for, uh, for starters, because I'm familiar with that space, we would need historical data as far back as we can go in order to build a risk model uh, so that a hedge fund can see how risky their position is. Uh, that's what we did back then. We would write these risk models for every asset class in the world so that um, fund managers or those looking to invest in a hedge fund would know how risky uh, it really is of what they're doing or what kind of trades they're taking on. And I see Bitcoin as another asset class that money managers and hedge funds uh, will start trading in the near future or holding a uh, longer term. And they will need risk models just so that they can see what's happening like with their other positions. That's one example. Other examples are the same trading hedge funds that have designed a model to trade Bitcoin. You need to back test it. You need data as far back as you can go um, in order to test how accurate your trading strategy is throughout all the historical ups and downs. Uh, and it's hard to get clean data these days. Yeah, and ultimately what you're giving people the opportunity to do is trade smarter, you know, invest in Bitcoin more intelligently, and it's helping Bitcoin find its price more accurately. If Brave New Coin is able to offer these risk models, or if they're able to offer different types of data about how to invest in the space, then that gives more information for your customers to make better decisions. Is that, is that close? Yeah, no, the, the, that's exactly it. Uh, the better you are as a trader, the more efficient the market is. That's that's what creates an efficient market is all the possible information right there in the price. Because one of the pains of Bitcoin right now is is the price volatility. I mean, we're seeing today even there's an, about you know five to eight percent pullback in the Bitcoin price. And you can't use something as money very easily if it fluctuates 10% a day. I mean, we're not seeing, say, the U.S. dollar, for instance. I mean, yes, it has a ton of liquidity, but you're not seeing the U.S. dollar fluctuate 10% a day against other currencies. Most of the time, as this currency crisis continues, we may see that eventually. But I think what Brave New Coin is trying to do is desperately needed in the space if we're going to be able to rely on Bitcoin as a currency and not just payment method. Yeah, but it will still take a lot of time. I'm uh, I'm on record for saying that Bitcoin is not a very good currency and, or a very good money at the moment. It might be in the future. We don't know. We'll get there. Uh, what I like to think about Bitcoin, the way I say it, is it's a good medium of exchange because it's a permissionless medium of exchange. Uh, you can just move it. To me, the, the Bitcoin's killer app has already existed. And that's the ability for you to move your capital cross borders without asking for permission, without the transaction being stopped. And it's great that the transaction would go through almost instantly and very, very cheaply. And to me, that's important. To me, that is the killer app. Um, you don't really need anything else. The ability to move your own wealth when governments tell you that you can't is very, very powerful. And historically, it's led to... Uh, the rise and fall of nations. So I'm going to take a, a little bit away from Brave New Coin. What type of freedom have you been provided for by your entrepreneurial journey? You've got a ton of basis of finance and now you're in the Bitcoin space. Do you see this tech creating freedom in, in lives? And, and how has your entrepreneurial journey created more in yours? I think just understanding Bitcoin and meeting the community would really help you just make so many good contacts with people that start to understand what freedom really is. And to me, uh, the number one thing in freedom, probably even more so than freedom of speech, freedom of speech is important, but freedom to move your own wealth to anywhere you want to move it to is just as important because that is what prevents um, certain economies from rising, certain economies from falling. And this is what allows... Uh, the control of borders, the ability to move your capital to start your business in an area of the world where your business can get the most out of it. And this is 
becoming a serious dynamic today because more and more jobs are computer programmers. More and more jobs are remote. I see a future where hardly anyone goes to buildings, to offices, unless there is some kind of a meeting, unless you need to have like a team building event. But I don't see the future as people working at an office every single day. To me, the future is living where you want to live, working on what you want to work, and having complete freedom to move around the world. And it starts with being able to move money around the world. That is a serious problem because for the last 10 years, it's been harder and harder to move your capital because money laundering laws just are getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And Bitcoin completely reverses that because it is, it's not regulatable in my opinion. And all these efforts to regulate Bitcoin, I personally believe it's a waste of time. So what are your top three tips for a new entrepreneur looking for success? I say really look around the world. Look outside your country. Everyone talks about Silicon Valley. Everyone talks about New York. These are very, very expensive cities. Um, yes, they have a lot of talent, but they're also very expensive cities. Utilize the entire globe. You don't need to meet the person that's going to do the best job programming for you. And you can find amazing talent outside of your border remotely and you can pay them with Bitcoin remotely. As long as the job gets properly done, you never need to meet that person. You don't have to worry about KYC AML. I have a lot of respect for companies that just get things done and not worry about the lawyers and not worry about all these other things. If you are if you are starting a company, chances are it's in the digital world. So my advice is look globally. Don't stick to one particular area. I think that's great advice. I mean, I share that perspective. I've worked with people for years now, all remotely, people that do incredible work with me. And I've built amazing business with some people that I, I've, I've never met. I've never, ever met them in real life. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing with all the technology that we have now, you can create actual real friendships and business relationships now with a very deep understanding of what each other's talents and skills are and how you can build something together. And you may never meet them. I, I don't know. You know, I, I hope to meet everyone that, that I'm working with right now, but it's been four years and I haven't met them yet. And, you know, maybe, maybe I never will, but Don, I completely agree that do jurisdictional arbitrage, right? Do time arbitrage. My web developer, for instance, she lives in Taiwan. I can give her a list of things that I would, I think are good for the website, for instance. And by the time I wake up, she's worked on them and has something for me whenever I wake up to expand on your, your advice, have people in multiple time jurisdictions. So literally the clock never stops on your own business. Yeah, that is, that, that is very important. We had those operations, even in, in finance, we had, uh, offices in Hong Kong, London, New York, and San Francisco. And our operation was 24 hours, uh, but that was for finance purposes because there's different markets closing all over the world. Uh, but yeah, so my, that's my advice for new entrepreneurs and also look to the future. Don't, uh, I, I, I'm sure people heard this before. Don't build your product for the now, build it for the future, but you should have a, a view of what you see the future will be like. And to me, the future is people aren't going to offices. People are working remotely. So think about the future where most people are programmers in 20, 30 years. That would be the only job that matters. Everything's going to get automated. So if everything's going to get automated in the next 10 to 20 years, what is going to be needed and how is your company easily will transition to this world and you can start today by not having an office like rent out, save your money, don't rent an office, rent something or share something so you can have meetings, you can have occasional get togethers. Uh, but that's, it's really hard starting out something new uh, is expensive. It's hard to get VC money and uh, look globally and try to start out with a remote company. Yeah. You don't need near as much money 
uh, VC money if you don't have a big office downtown and take all your employees out to lunch every day. I mean, you can with you know five hundred dollars, you could really get something up and going and have the online digital infrastructure to keep your team connected. You know, twenty four hours a day. I mean, free services like Slack, for instance. Man, I just started using Slack about five six months ago, and it has kept multiple teams of mine really connected. It's uh, it's amazing. Tone, uh, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. Would you like to plug anything or give contact details about you or any of your projects? Sure. Uh, I guess the one, one of the better ways to find me is just Google my name, Tone Vase. There'll be a lot of di different stuff comes up. I write at Brave New Coin. You can find my work there. I also have a personal blog called Liberty Life Trail. I started this blog right before I got involved in the Bitcoin space and it was going to be way more than Bitcoin. I had all these plans and now it's turned into mostly Bitcoin, which I will still branch around. It was going to be more talking about travel and uh, economics in general and trading and investing. And Bitcoin was just going to be one tool to achieve this. And then the more I got involved in Bitcoin, the more I realized how important it really is to the world. Um, so I do a lot of podcasts, a lot of video blogs, and they all go to my blog. And uh, I will start putting out original content there as well soon. Well, I hope you can repost this one, Tone. And it's been uh, very pleasurable having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, and you can also follow me on Twitter, uh, Tone underscore LLT, with the LLT standing for my blog, Liberty Life Trail. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Liberty Entrepreneur's Podcast. I hope that you found Tone's advice on building a global business with outsourced virtual staff real helpful. Please find us on Facebook and Twitter and iTunes. All the links are on our website. We'd really appreciate it if you could review us and subscribe. We're a growing podcast and every subscription really helps. Thanks so much and tune in next week for another episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs.